Dream Gamers, today we're going to set up a, a, a flight and show you how I set this up with uh, flying the PMDG 737-700 variant, although the 6, 8, and 900 variants will be the same in terms of setup. We are here in Vancouver uh, and we're going to set up as if we were going to be flying to LAX. Uh, we likely will not get through far enough to get to taxi and departure and so forth. But if we do, so be it. Um, so those uh, that haven't realized yet, PMDG now has a more functioning uh, flight bag here. We will be using that. Uh, there will be a few pieces of, of uh, software, uh, websites and so forth that I'll, I'll be using in order to, to do this setup with. Now, I've gone ahead and created a flight plan already in SimBrief. Uh, however, I'm going to walk through it again so you can see how I do it. This is, this is SimBrief. Go ahead and create yourself an account. Um, it's free to use um, unless, of course, you want to use the current IRX cycles, which um, I'm not, this isn't a video about that, but it's it's more up to date. Um, departures, arrivals, SIDS, stars, blah blah blah. Anyways, so we go new flight. Here we're going to select our airline. We are going to be flying a WestJet, and we are going to be using the flight number one nine six six. We're going to be departing CYVR, which is Vancouver, and we're going to KLAX, which is Los Angeles. We're going to be flying a 737. Uh, let's go in here and find my 737-700 economy. Um, so this is, this is, for all intents and purposes, the flight that we're going to use. There are varying different routes to use. Be aware that because I have a subscription to Navigraph, uh, Navigraph charts and so forth, it allows me to use varying different tools and features in here that you may not have because if you don't have that subscription, this can be done without it. I'm just I want to forewarn you. I'm going to use this here, but you can see there's multiple different um, um, flight plans in which I could use. To, to navigate and you'll notice on the map here that is changing as I cycle through them. It isn't changing a lot, but they are changing. This is the one I'm going to use. I can analyze it. I can say now my route is valid for the ARAC cycle of 2312, which is what I'm using. The route distance is 974 nautical miles. Uh, I'm not sure what this indicates if somebody can if somebody knows what that means by all means go ahead and post that in the in the video descriptor comments or whatever you want to call it so the next step um, you can save the flight plan you can share the flight plan so if you had a friend that you wanted to fly the same flight plan you would hit save or share you would copy it that would copy it to a clipboard you could paste it into an email or discord channel whatever what have you I'm gonna hit generate in the generation of the flight plan there's a couple things that are going to happen here one, we're actually going to get the full flight plan now generated. So now we get to see there's the there's the flight number, there's the call sign. We're going to Vancouver. We're leaving Vancouver, going to LAX. We have Vegas as our as our um, 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 secondary airport. I forget what they call that. Uh, it'll come to me. Uh, we're going to fly at 37,000 feet. Our cost index will be 26. I'll go into this a little more details. There's our, our uh, distance and so on and so on. Here is our in route fuel. This is the fuel that we're intending to burn throughout the trip, but it, we are going to carry 20,677 pounds. I'm going to put a little bit more than that. Cargo, I'm going to probably leave that and so on. Um, I do have videos explaining these things a little more in depth if you want to go through my YouTube channel. Uh, stream gamers again um, and you can see them in there so I won't go too 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 much into into too much more detail about this so now let's turn that off and we are here on ground so uh, I have chosen to start this as a cold and dark flight because I want to go through what is the start procedure in which I use I am NOT a pilot um, these, this is a procedure that I use and it works. 
Um, and it's not flawless because you're going to probably see me make a couple of blunders go, hmm, why did that happen? And remember, oh yeah, I'm supposed to do this or do that. But at the end of this, you should be able to be sitting at a gateway somewheres or on a ramp somewheres and do a cold and dark start, import the flight plan and get ready for taxi. All right. So let's, uh, first thing we want to do is, is we need to go ahead and we need to get some power going here. So the aircraft has ground power sitting here. Who that is, but anyways, we have a ground power unit sitting there, which gives us ground power. So if we come up here, there's our ground power. So we'll push that down and we have ground power. So our next step is, is going to be get the APU up and running. Um, so that we have um, APU or auxiliary power uh, working. Um, and then we can release the, the ground power and so on and so forth. So the way we get that started is we put the fuel pumps on. You really only have to put the aft fuel pump on. Um, but I always put them all on um, because that's just how I do it. So the APU starter switch is right here. You're going to see this gauge is going to go up and it's going to come back down and then this light is going to be illuminated allowing us to put the APU generators on. So that's going to take a take a, a, a minute or two to get that up. There's the low pressure light meaning the APU uh, turbine is starting which doesn't have any oil pressure to start with but eventually presumably it will build some oil pressure and, and that light should go out. Um, this is the waiting game apparently, which I'm not so good at. So, I got fuel is on, right? Yes, fuel is on. This is going to shortly here in another ten or so seconds, I would think this is, should start to fire out. Or not. This is maybe one of those times where I said, I'm going to make a few mistakes along the way, and it's not going to do what I think it's supposed to do when it's supposed to do it. Uh, what am I missing? I don't think anything. Got ground power up, which means we got, yeah. We got our fuel pumps are on. Oh, uh, battery. We did not turn the battery on, did we? That was the problem. We need to put on the battery, which is there. Boop. APU generator should be running already. There goes the oil pressure. I've been flying, there it is. I've been flying the uh, 787, 747, and A323 and A310 a lot. So I haven't flown this for a little while, and I forgot about the, you got to turn the battery on. So battery is on, and by the way, there's a switch up there. Um, there's a switch cover. If you just click on that switch cover, it turns the battery on. So this is coming down, and as this gauge comes down, I think it's somewhere around two, two and a half, maybe three, uh, eventually... The APU light. Oop. Come on. Let me close that off. So APU gen comes on. We put the gen the APU generators on and now they are on. We can we are now providing the aircraft with APU power and we no longer need our ground power. So we can shut our ground power off. 
and we can actually go in to here and we can get rid of the ground power so there's ground power here you see that it says ground power we're going to release that ground power and now the ground power is, is leaving the aircraft so next step let's go over to the flight bag and we're going to go into here here because i put um the flight plan within sim brief and because i have my sim brief id put in you click on here and you'll enter your sim brief uh id because i have mine in there when i click on that it pulls that data in here now you will see westjet 1966 we're flying a pmdg 737 we are we are departing vancouver going to los angeles and our alternate is uh, las vegas and there's our distance and so on and so forth and so on so that's that's that we we there are more things in here in which we can do i haven't explored a lot of this um but there are more things in here that we can do but for this uh we're we're really talking about getting the aircraft started and getting it ready now we click on FMC, that brings us to this page. Because we did the, loaded it into the flight pack, we should be able to hit route. We should be able to hit request. There it is right there. And we should be able to put that in. We should be able to set payload. And that's coming from the sim brief. And we should be able to set our fuel that we want. So we are loading the fuel, I believe is what we're doing. And I think if I get rid of that, we should now have our departure, our destination, our alternate, our zero fuel weight, our reserve fuel, our block fuel. That's all been set in there now. So now we are waiting for the request to come and there's gonna be a, um, a load icon here eventually if I've done this correct there it is now we have to load the route in so we're loading the route in by the way if you hear that growling that's my little dog down there I don't know if you can hear that if it's coming on the on the um, picking up on the microphone so we're loading in the route the air the route the, the route has been loaded we're gonna hit activate we're gonna hit execute it is now in now when we go into here we can do the same thing with this page here. We can hit request. And we know it's being requested because that's that's been highlighted. And eventually we're going to get a load uh, button here that we can press. And there's the load. So we hit load. And you'll notice now this has all been populated. And that's all been populated from SimBrief into here because we, set, we did set that up earlier. So without further... I do I'm gonna come up here now and I'm gonna do the the uh, um, uh, what do they call it the alignment process up here somewhere is two switches for alignments so we hit that that and you see it switched to the other color so when it switches it then we will put it to the next switch and to the next one and our um, IRS alignments are taking place. I'm going to hit yaw damper, turn the yaw damper on because I know we're going to need that on later. Uh, so now we come in here and we go to depart and arrive and we go to departure. In our departure, um, let me put that on now. So you can see as soon as I get my mouse over there, you can see here's our departure right here. That's our flight plan right there. And it may be hard for you to see it, but our departure is 08 right. So we go 08 right. Uh, we turn this off. So we go 08 right here. Um, if we had a SID in our plan we would we would uh yeah if we had the sid which is which is the departure standard instrument departure we would pick it in this case our plan does not have a sid so we will not pick it we will execute it 
We'll go back to index. We're going to now pick on the arrival, which is um, Los Angeles. And we're going to do the same process. In this case, we actually have here. Oh, 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 there. So in this case, we are we are coming in on runway two four left, but our star is uh, I R N M N two. So when we go here, we are going to look for. Uh, when we go into here, we're going to look for two four left, which is right here, and we are looking for. I R blah 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 something right there. I R N M two this one. And then is there a transition in amidst all of this? R E B R right here. There's the transition that we want. And we execute. Enter the IRS position. Um we got to go down here and we got to go over here and here it wants us to enter in this IRS position which is here and there now our displays are fully illuminated everything is set up and lit up and we're working the way it was supposed to before I didn't show it but before there was a bunch of uh, these weren't fully illuminated or fully lit up the way they should be okay so now let's come back here and let us finish our um, our stuff that we need to do. So we got our fuel on board. 737, typically your departure is with flaps 5. Your center of gravity, which is CG, if you click on this once, it puts it down here. You click on it again, it puts it in. This is our trim. We're going to set our trim according to that. Now we're going to come here and we're going to set our, set our V speeds, which is 130, 133, and 148. So we click there once, click, and click, and we're done. We're going to come up and we're going to go back into here. There's our flight altitude of 37,000 feet. So we want to climb 37,000 feet. So we're going to go up here and we're going to put in... We're going to put in 37,000 feet. Um, I have an autopilot panel, but you you can just turn the dial. Turn 37,000 feet there. Now, I always, as 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 practice, I will I will set my runway heading, um, and I will set my my speed. Your speed. Oops speed is 10 knots over let's go back down here your speed is typically 10 knots over your v2 v2 speed so you should have your speed set to 150 i i, I don't do that uh, but if you wanted to set it you know be more precise with it that's where you should set it at 150 i'm going to set mine at usually around 200 that's usually what i do uh, I also have a program here, and I'm going to get that loaded up. So I also use uh, Little Nav Map, um, and Little Nav Map is is a program that let's turn it on right there. So this is Little Nav Map because I have um, it set up in Synbrief. When I come here to little nav map, I click on this, I click on load, I click on create, and the same flight plan that I've just put into the sim now is in here. Now the relevance to that is I want to find the runway heading, the exact runway heading that I'm that I'm departing on. Um, departing 08 uh, left. So when we look at 08 left, there's 08 left, there's the heading, 84 degrees. So I come back here and I set this to 84 degrees. Whoa, 84, not 184. There. So the reason why I do that is that when on my departure, um, I can just immediately hit heading hold and it's going to hold 
that runway heading if I choose to, right? Um, I, I likely won't. I like will hit VNAV. I'll wait for LNAV. Once I'm in the air, I'll turn on uh, um, LNAV. I'll engage the autopilot and we'll depart and it'll start climbing and leaving. Um, we're getting through this a lot quicker than normally, so I would probably, we may do a taxi out and actually do that just yet. Okay, uh, so we've got, our flight plan is now set. I'm going to go down here and we're going to just verify a couple things. If you click on the legs page, you want to come through here and you want to page through using these buttons here. You're looking for things like vectors and discontinuity. So there's a vector. So vector is, is when we leave this waypoint on our way to here, we're expecting ATC to vector us to this waypoint. We don't have ATC to do that for us, so we will eliminate the, the vector by clicking this bottom one and putting it on top and then re-executing. Okay, and you notice how there's our runway. So it was, it was just before just before we were coming to the runway. So that's where you would expect ATC to get engaged and say, hey, fly heading, blah, 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 descend to fly uh, speed at whatever and so forth and so on. Sometimes you're gonna find that you will get what's called a discontinuity. Um, if you get the discontinuity, for example, if this was a discontinuity, you would do the same thing. You would click on this one and you put up over top of and click on the discontinuity and then that would leave as well. In this case, we don't have that. Uh, we're gonna come here and we're gonna turn this out just a little bit. Uh, I prefer to have my have, have a little broader view of what's going on here. So um, our next step is going to be um, our next step is going to be starting starting engines and 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 that sort of thing. So how do we do that? Well. We have our fuel pumps on. We have our APU running. In order for an engine, uh, uh, the jet engine to start, it, it uses APU bleed. So APU bleed is as the turbine is spinning, it's creating pressure or air, yeah, pressure. We use that pressure and we divert that pressure to the engine, to the jet engines here to spin them so that we'll, they will start right well, as they spin they and there's an igniter in there it's creating heat and eg temp, egt temp comes up and when the certain temperature hits it when it hits a certain temperature we'll put fuel in there ta-da it starts um that's far from a technical way of explaining it but that's the way i understand it and again if somebody if i'm wrong about that please by all means let me know how it should be done differently and i will i will learn with the rest of us anyways um, we are going to be climbing to 37,000 feet. We need to set this to 37,000 feet. We're going to pressurize the cabin as if, uh, or pressurize the cabin for 37,000 feet so that, you know, we can all breathe and that kind of stuff. Likewise, our arrival, we have to make sure that we depressurize the cabin accordingly as we descend coming down. Because if we don't, um, things, if I remember correctly, what ends up happening is things can go boom. Uh, fuselage can fly apart. I think that's how it works. Again, if I'm wrong, you know, comment, let me know. So, in starting in the aircraft, there's a few things that we have to be prepared for. Uh, there's a few things that we'll need to we'll need to take care of as we're getting ready to start the engines. These are the starter switches. Oops. The, these are the starter switches. These are the igniters. So typically you would ignite uh, engines on right and then the next time you ignited them, you'd ignite them on the left. And the way I understand it, you just kind of rotate that back and forth so that you're not using the same igniter all the time. Um, but in this case, we're gonna use both igniters and we're not gonna worry about that. But just know that's, that's the igniters. The fuel switches, are right here. When we put this on, that's because our EGT temp or N2 temp is, is high enough to dump fuel in. So what we're gonna do is 
in this case we are going to start the aircraft up here on ground and we're going to just turn out and taxi away we're not going to if we do get going we're going to that's how we're going to do it so let us um let us uh let us put some light in here just so it, it's easier for us to see so we won't use live so that we have a nice clear bright picture of these steps in which we're doing uh, I got that right I got that right I got that set we'll come up there later on we'll turn that on later on okay so let's start them up first things first we always start the right engine first so we put the right engine to ground we we put the APU on we'll set that to auto and the packs are off so when we come out here we see that that engine is spinning See it spinning? As that engine spins, it is let me go up here. It is creating N1, right? As N1 comes up, usually around 19, so we're a little behind it, we will put fuel to it. And we're going to start seeing oil pressure is coming up, the temp is coming up the engine is coming up it's actually starting and we see the starter valve is still open AGT is just about up completely we know that the engine is started and completely started as this switch is going to click off and it's going to do that here momentarily there it is it's off so same thing can be done now for the uh, left board engine we watch temperatures coming up we can see that the N1 is coming up as well EGT is 15 and there's our 19 that's usually what I look for is 19 and we get ready to go and fire it up notice EGT is coming And we're going to look up here and we're going to hear that distinct click. We should. There it is. So remember, we were on APU gen before. Now we're going to go on the, the right and left engine generators. And because we've done that, we can now shut the APU off. And we shut the APU off, and eventually you're going to see this temperature come down, and the APU is going to be off. You'll notice that my center tanks are off because the center tanks don't have any fuel in them. If we look at this, uh, and we look at our center tank, well, the center tank's got a little bit of fuel, so we'll put them on. Typically, we don't we don't we don't get fuel in those in those tanks, but there is a little bit, so we'll put them on. So now we've got that right. We're going to put our anti-icing on. Electric or uh, hydraulic pumps are coming on. We're going to set the packs to auto. We're going to set the APU off, and you'll see this is now coming up. So this is intending to put air into the cabin and pressurize the cabin per requirements here but also for heating and cooling and so on and so forth all right i think i think so right now we have two good engine starts we got our flight plan set in there we do still need to do a couple more things up here. A, we need to put the flight directors on. B, I put the auto throttle or arm the auto throttle. Now, I want to come back to the altitude. Um, ideally, you wouldn't be climbing directly out to 37,000 feet. There's usually some transitions along there uh, that, that you do that with. Um, I just always set it to my max cruise altitude and let the aircraft climb accordingly all right so you notice that 
We still have our, our air stair, or I mean our stairs here. Uh, so we want that gone. So let's get that gone and get the cab get the doors closed. Uh, so we go to menu. We go to FS actions, ground services. Um, next page. Next page. Stairs. That should disconnect them. And they are packing up and getting ready to take off. I think, yep, there it goes. The other thing is we notice that we have our chalk, our wheel chalk still in place. So first things first, let's make sure that our brakes are set. Brakes are now set. And wheel chocks are being removed. So we see that they're removed now, wheel chucks are removed. I could use the tug or use the tug and get me get me out of here, but I'm gonna just this isn't an exercise of how to use that kind of stuff. This is more of an exercise of getting the aircraft started and knowing what to do or knowing how to do how, how I do it. Not necessarily the right way, but how I actually do it. So um, I think we are set. Um, I think I will taxi and depart. Uh, we may not do the whole flight and we'll probably pick it up in the air some other point when we do a, an arrival and show you the kind of the reverse of everything we did here. Shutdowns and our arrival, taxiing down, get to the gate and all of that good stuff. Anyways, so um, in the PMDG, if you have a button that, that manually does your, or that, that does your brakes, sometimes it doesn't work just by pushing that button. I have toe brakes. Sometimes, for whatever reason, my toe brakes don't do it either. So, there it is, the brakes are off. Um, it, it's a bit of a chore. Next thing you want to do is, oops, I, I did forget one thing. But we want to set our flaps to five. And we're going to come in here, we're going to look at our trim. You see our trim there is 5.68. That is on here. So our trim wants to be, you know, just beyond the five, right? Thereabouts. So let's go ahead and set our trim to that. Yeah, probably somewhere in that area. Good enough. Okay. Um, we have our tow brakes set right now because our, our um, park brakes or park brake is off. Um, so we are ready to just to start taxing. Um, yeah, we are. So now for those um, that were that are using that sim or that sort of thing, you guys know what you're doing here, but but you know, or, ordinarily you would, you know, call up for ATC to give you part departure and all of that good stuff. And then you would allow ground to tell you to go ahead and start taxing. Um, we should have our taxi lights on. Now we are departing uh, runway, uh, runway 8 right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to open this up. And for those that have um, unload the flight, for those that actually have uh, Navigraph, uh, that is which side am I on here? It's my left. So this is Navigraph. So we are going to uh, we're going to that was weird. We're going to um, import from Simbrief. Here's our flight plan. And the reason why I bring this up like this is because I want to show you what I use for taxiing. For those pilots, they probably know some of these airports like the back of their hand and the taxiways and blah, blah, blah. But I don't. So I can see there it is. And, and I want to go to uh, 8 right. I want to go to uh, here. I'm coming to here. 
if I remember correctly. Yes, I'm coming there. So I'm here. I want to go here. So we're probably going to taxi here, get this taxiway, come straight across, all the way down, and come here. And the neat thing about this is I get to watch that. And so I can see how I should be taxiing. So you can see I'm taxiing on this line. And so now you see that I'm taxiing down here and I've got myself taxiing where I want to go. We'll taxi ourselves out. Ideally, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be taxiing any more than 20, 20 knots thereabouts. Um, I can use a little nav map to tell me what my taxiing speed is if I want. So right now I'm indicating seventeen knots. Uh, we can see that by it's in there. It's kind of hard to see it, but it's but it is in there. Sorry, I uh, told you wrong. There's my speed. So in a lot of cases, the taxi, what we're doing right now isn't terribly difficult. Um, and I'm kind of weaving around all over the place, but I'm doing that because I'm actually um, I'm trying to show various different views and, and how I do what I do. And then also try to explain, you know, the reasoning behind the method of the madness. So one other thing that you see when I'm outside, I can see my throttle. Now I set this up like this so I can actually see this. But really when you're inside, you don't really need that because obviously you've got this. And you can hear the engines uh, powering up. I, I hope that you're able to hear the engines powering up. Think about it. And there goes the engines powered up. Okay, so we're just about to our hold short. Let's slow down a bit because we're going a little quick. Now, I, uh, I prefer to fly with a certain level of correctness. I, I'm, again, I'm not a pilot, um, but I prefer to fly with a certain level of correctness. So I don't want to just come to the threshold here and, 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 and just fire off and get it going. So normally what I do, and I normally fly in east, east server, so what I normally will do is I'll look outside, right, or... The other thing I can do is I can look off that way, I can look off that way. Now that way I got a good view, but this side, because I don't have a co-pilot, I don't really have a good view. So I look up, and I look out there. Yeah, looks clear, looks clear. Last thing I hate, I hate to do is I hate to depart and somebody's on their way in. So we will set our VNAV. We'll make that active. We will, uh, um, uh, 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 what will we do? I got that all set, don't I? Yes. We'll throttle up and we'll put ourselves on the road. Now you're going to hear, you're going to hear, and hopefully you can see down here the speed um, 
you should hear um, things like v um, uh, rotate. Um, I think the other thing you'll hear is, is a positive rate of climb. Um, right here is toga. So the idea, I'm going to stop here, I'm going to explain toga a little bit as I, as I understand it. Okay, so as I understand it, toga is takeoff, uh, basically set your, your thrust for takeoff based on what you've set in the FMC. And so, Based on what the FMC has been set up, I can't remember now where that is. But what we do is we stabilize. Um, we should push the throttles up, you know, 40-ish, 50%. We should let them stabilize as the aircraft is taxiing down the runway. Once they're stabilized, once the engines are stabilized, and stabilizing is both of these indicators, or in the case of this, both of these indicators are equal. When they are, we then hit toga. Normally, the toga is is here on the on the throttle quadrant, which is uh, is that the, that looks like it's disengaged. I thought toga was on here. Anyways, in this case, they have put it right there. So I'm going to take brakes off. I'm going to slowly push the throttle forward. I'm going to let it come up. I'm going to let it stabilize. And then I'm going to hit toga, and you hear the thrusts. The thrusters come full, but 92 percent. Here, on the display, is that green line, and it's hard. It called V naught. Right away, it'll say V one. V one rotate. Rotate. I typically let it accelerate just a bit more and then I rotate. And rotating is just pull back on the column or your joystick, whichever you use. There's a positive rate of climb. When we hear positive rate of climb, we set the, we push the gear up. We're going to follow the magenta line. It's, you may not see it, but it's right here. And that's what I'm flying for. I'm going to hit the autopilot. I'm going to hit the L nav. Bring up one stage of flaps. You hear the, the, the throttles coming back a little bit. We have to maintain a certain speed based on flap settings, as well as we have to maintain no faster than 250 knots uh, below 10,000. We're climbing. Right there, you see our flaps are showing indicated up. So we push the rest of the flap, the rest of the flaps up. It's going to hold here at 2:30. Our flaps are are fully up. We know that because if you look, whoops, right there, our flaps are fully up. And we're flying and we're maintaining the magenta line, which is the flight path in which we put in, and off we go. So that is what um, a cold and dark looks like. You know, get the APU up and running, get the uh, flight plan moved over from SimBrief in there. If you don't have a SimBrief flight plan in which you want to just manually put in there yourself, um, I have a couple of videos on my YouTube channel that explain how to do that on the 787 as well as the 747. It's not terribly unique to just those two aircraft. They're very similar on the 737. So you can put all of those things in um, manually instead of having it automatically put in there if you choose to. 
Um, and I did that for a while as myself. I actually was doing those entries in there. So there are some videos that, that will explain how to do that. that. That is on my YouTube channel as well. I don't think I have any on the Twitch channel. I'm actually kind of new to streaming on Twitch. Um, I've been doing uh, YouTube postings for quite a while already, but I thought I would uh, do some streaming on, on Twitch because why? Because I can't. So here we go. We are flying away here. We are on our, we're on our way uh, uh, to um, LAX. Beautiful day. Here it is a beautiful day. However, if we were to go back here, I'm going to go back inside the cabin so we can get rid of all that terrible noise. Let me turn that down a little bit so you don't hear all of it. Um, and if we hit live weather, we will discover, aha, hang on, that's not what I want. We will discover, yeah, it's not so wonderful out here at all. It's actually quite, quite miserable. Um, this is actually live weather to what Vancouver is um, right now, I, I suppose. Um, but, yeah. So that takes us... Uh, up in the air and we are on our way our probably next stream will be discussing the uh, preparation for um, uh, approach arrival landing taxiing to the gate shutting down and all of that stuff the PMDG 737 along with the 787, 747, and a whole host of aircraft have this what's called Autoland. And so for those that are not familiar with Autoland, Autoland is a function that the aircraft can actually land itself, put itself on the ground. Now, how accurate that really is and true in real life, I don't know, but it is really, really accurate. Um, uh, when you're flying it in in the simulator um, the the only thing you need to do is do the preparation um, to get ready for it but once you've done the preparation and the, the necessary steps to get ready for it um, you will see uh, I will do an auto line into LAX uh, you will likely see this aircraft land itself I will not have my hands on the controllers uh, it will land itself there will be some things that I will do leading up and getting close to things like flaps is is one thing I will ensure that I have my landing uh, flaps and speed uh, determined and then I will engage two autopilot so you will see that over here we have A and B and so we use A and B for an auto land um, and they both cross-reference to one another so a looks to b and says yeah are you doing what i'm doing and b looks to a and say all right hey are you doing what i'm doing yes you are okay continue on if those two do not um, um, um concur with what's going on if b says no hey i want to go over that way and a says no i want to go over that way then the auto land will not work now that's more real life like that isn't in the sim i don't think that's modeled in the sim for that to actually take place Maybe it is, um, but I don't think it is. We are climbing, um, and I want to show this because I'll show the the, uh, the other side of it as well. Right here, you can see our top of climb, meaning in 88 nautical miles, we should be at our cruise altitude of 37,000 feet. We are climbing at 18. We are at 18,000. So here in North America. When we hit 18,000, we set the barometric pressure to standard. I, I don't have a full grasp on barometric pressure, although I do understand that different barometric pressures have a bearing on the altitude, the true altitude of where the actual aircraft is. So if the pressure is this, you have to use that in your calculations to determine how far you are indeed actually off the ground. And I'm sure there's a much more comprehensive uh, description as to how that is or how that all works. Okay, so I think uh, I'll just go mental breakdown through my head here and 
make sure that I haven't missed some things that needed to be discussed or talked about that I haven't done on the preparation startup, um, importing the flight plan in, taxiing, uh, departure. I think we got it all. Uh, if we don't, in my next stream, I will probably go through that. It is the time? Yeah, it is. Um, so the flight is about two hours, and, and I'm, I'm, I could lay, leave it run for two hours, but it will just be dead time. And so I, I don't think I'll do that. I think what I'll do is, is I'll cut the stream here, and then um, I will re-pick up the stream um, once I am uh, probably 100 miles to top a descent or something like that. All right. This is Raymond, this is Stream Gamers, um, and this is what it takes to, this is what it takes for me to get the aircraft started from cold and dark, and flight plan put in, and taken off, and departed correctly, and everything else, and everything is functioning the way it's supposed to. Um, so yeah, if there's any comments that you have, by all means, let me know. Uh, if there's things that I could do better, let me know. If there's if there's other aircraft that you have an interest in in learning how to do what you need to do with it, I don't have a huge knowledge of every aircraft, uh, but I do fly 737, 787, 747, uh, A320, A330, A310. Um, those aircraft I fly quite often. Um, and I have a reasonably decent understanding of how to do all the same things with those aircraft as I've done with this one. All right, without further ado, I've been saying it for a while. I am out. Um, you guys uh, all enjoy the rest of your day and evening and night and morning, whatever it is where you are. And we will pick this up on our next stream uh, showing you the rest of it. All right, bye-bye now.